the dance where ever you may be. I am the lord of the dance city, and I need you all wherever you may be, and I need you all in the dance city. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the lord of the dance city. And I need you all, wherever you may be, and I need you all in the density. My name is Martin Maloney. I run the Moon and Sixpence Puppet Theatre. The Moon and Sixpence Puppet Theatre started in the 1980s. It was uh, founded by myself and a colleague of mine, Pat Lanigan Ryan. Uh, we had both played with the puppets, but then after um, a time we said, well, we could do more with these. So we began to do shows uh, for charity and then for ourselves. It started then and went on for some years until eventually we went our separate ways and our own professional lives developed after that. Uh, we then brought it back in the depths of the recession, but we were delighted to discover that uh, children really haven't changed much despite all the technology. They still like stories and they still like fun and most importantly they like the live interaction that you get with puppets. The live aspect of puppet theatre is really, really important. And I think for children today, because of the technology, most of what they're dealing with is either recorded material or it's material that is technologically driven and supposedly interactive. But it's, I think it's a kind of an artificial interactivity. Whereas live performance, if you think of Maureen Potter on the gaiety stage for years, I mean, that was ultimately timing, um, delivering of lines, of comedy lines, just waiting for the... You know, how much space do you leave? When do you drop the key line? All that sort of thing. And um, that's amazingly powerful. And I think children react to that. The other aspect that we found really interesting about puppet theatre, the way we do it is, um, that there are two levels going on. We have the ordinary story for children and the jokes they'll get. But on top of that then, there is another level of reference for adults. That now there is caterpillar cage, Ooh. or should I say butterfly cage. <laughs> she got her wings about 10 minutes ago, and ever since she's been flying around like a Ryanair jet. <laughs> fair play to her. We find the teachers, and indeed when we do family shows, the parents then react to that in a different way. And the Simpsons do a little bit of that, where there's two levels going on and one doesn't spoil the other. So the live part, uh, the comedy, and I think the movements of the puppets. String puppets are unusual. They're different. They have a human-like quality in their movement. And I think for children to see that, it's unusual. Hello, Peter. What are you doing in Granny's nightdress? What am I doing in Granny's nightdress? Uh, I'm on my way to a fancy dress party. Uh, a fancy dress party. Uh, is that true, my dear? The name Moon and Sixpence, it depends on whether you want the public relations answer or the truth. The nice story is that the Moon and Sixpence relates to the fact that many years ago, puppet theatre was uh, presented with the light of the moon and people were charged sixpence which is a nice story, but it's not the truth. Uh, the true story is that uh, Moon and Sixpence came from a pub in Nina in County Tipperary many years ago when I was uh, a teenager, I suppose, called The Moon and Sixpence, which in turn was called after a novel by Somerset Maughan. And I just thought Moon and Sixpence was such an evocative name that if ever I had a business, I would call it. And a puppet theatre called Moon and Sixpence is pretty perfect. People always remember, they do. Uh, top of the morning to you, sir. It is a grand day for a walk. It's a miserable day, and I hate walking. Oh. Uh, in terms of the different voices, when you use a puppet, if you're concentrating on it, you become that character. And I suppose if any actor would, would dismiss what I'm saying as, as being fundamental. But what's interesting is that when you are controlling a puppet, which has a particular character, your voice goes with that. Uh, and so uh, it's probably easier to do it easier to change voices because you're holding a puppet in your hand and you look at that puppet and it triggers the voice or character that you have. Listen to me. Who is this person who has committed this terrible crime? Well, the person who's committed the crime is... Yeah. Well, the name of the person is... Yeah. Well, the person who's broken the law... Yeah, 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 yeah. Michelin Dio. Eh? What? Michelin Dio? Ah, 
Also across those uh, primary school shows, we would have live references to where we are on the day, particular school, and then we bring in some current affairs of the day. At the moment, you can make fun of Donald Trump and a four-year-old will laugh. I don't want you to be the president of America. Yeah! They got Donald Trump for that. Donald Trump? Yes, I thought his name was Donald Duck. Oh, now they like him. There's the line of the Disney song, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And so that's what we do. Uh, we let the children have some fun, have some great time. But nonetheless, in that, there is always something about perhaps the value of patience, uh, the value of giving people a second chance, uh, the value of appreciating difference, uh, anti-bullying message, the environment, picking up litter, whatever it might be, those messages are there, but in a fun what context. What I do now, this really bad is, I never pick up any litter, and I throw rubbish wherever I like. Isn't that brilliant? No! Oh, yes, it is. No! So if you like, the children discover after the show, Oh, actually, I learned something there. And then the teachers uh, then can build on that. And very often they'll build a discussion or a piece of homework built on that idea. And as I say, it really is uh, um, sugaring the pill, you know, so the children enjoy it. And, and if, you know, if you have fun learning, it's very effective learning. To be able to have an audience for nearly an hour engaged is brilliant. Like, yeah. and, and, and a nice storyline brought in the school into it and, uh, and a good finish and a good moral to it. So like they had, it ticked all the boxes like from our perspective as well as the entertainment value for the kids. Like. Anybody who gives a teacher a roast is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did you get it yourself? I did. It was about my age, kind of years and years ago or something. Oh, Miss Kennelly know about that. If you want to know about the olden days, you should ask Miss Kennelly. <laughs> She'd remember. <laughs> Charlotte and Miss Smith robbing the bike. Oh yeah, the thieves. And put in jail overnight. <laughs> and what was interesting was the way we made fun of the teachers and yet there was a line we didn't cross. So the children got to learn the difference between having fun with somebody and being unkind. And that's something important. No one was hurt in the making of this puppet show. And I think that's important. So you can have fun with people, you can joke with them, and yet you're not hurtful. And that's something that's important. And we seem to have gotten that balance. Mightn't have planned it, but I suppose practice, you do get that level. And that's been interesting. Oh, God, did you see that? Unfortunately, I did. Oh, well, uh, here's the goal, Zed. The going was fine until you got here. Oh, I kind of grew up with it a bit, so it's kind of, it seems normal to me. Hmm. Um, so once I got over the initial kind of, oh, there's people out there and they can hear me, then it's just fine. And you realize that you can kind of make mistakes and you can try things and do things and, you know, nobody's going to call you out on it. Like they might laugh or they might, they might notice that it's a mistake, but they're not going to harass you for it. So it's just, it's a nice environment to kind of play around. It's, uh, it's very soft and uh, it's squishy. Oh, and it's a bit bouncy. Oh, it's very bow, 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 boots! It's a joy. When you have a good audience, you come out of it buzzed. And even people who, um, whether they're professional actors or they play in amateur dramatics, when you have an audience that is receptive to you, responsive to you, uh, you come away from that performance really recharged and energized. Uh, so that's, that's a privilege.
I'm afraid so. Uh, yeah. Jamie Macaroon. Yeah. Yeah.